Hi everybody and a very warm welcome back to the painting channel and what will be part two of what's in my plein air sketching bag. Now I know before you say it we've already done this one so what could be different? Well let's roll that intro and I'll tell you what it's all about. Hi guys and welcome back. Now as I said just now, it is going to be part two of what's in my sketching bag. Now, I showed you all the contents a couple of weeks ago, so what on earth am I doing talking to you all about it again? Nothing really has changed too much, but what I wanted to do in this video is show you what I did with this spare piece of board, which if you remember from the last one, I actually uh, said I would keep as a spare. Well, I've taken the idea a little further with that one and made something more purposeful from it. So I'm going to talk about that. I also want to talk to you a little bit more about the uh, amount of stuff you take with you. And my kit bag is quite heavy and there's quite a lot in there, as you well know. And I wanted to go into a way of making something even more simple. And I'm going to show you how I created a similar idea to the one of a couple of weeks ago, but much smaller, much more portable, and something you can slide in your pocket. So without further ado, let's get on and let's see what it's all about. Now, last week I left you with the fact that I've made several versions of this lightweight kit that I could hold in my hand, and I put these magnetic strips on. And what it meant was that this first version that I'd created, being that it was quite heavy material, was almost made redundant and useless to me. I said I was going to keep it as a spare in case anything happened to this first version. But I felt that if that stood up to the test of time, this is going to be just lost, wasted. And, you know, it took a bit of effort to get all these things together. So I felt that I didn't want to just throw it away or sling it into a corner somewhere. So what I decided to do was this. I actually created a mount for the back. Now, this is a standard uh, tripod mount that is put onto a metal plate. And I don't know where in America you may, if I can get this thing off, but there you go. Just a standard tripod mount. This, the tripods that I commonly use for lightweight kit is a fairly inexpensive Velbron E61, I think it's called, um, or EF61. And they're only about 30 to 50 pounds, depending where you buy them. I often buy one if I need one second hand. And you can buy it off a well known auction site, uh, known to most of us, and they're quite readily available. But this one is a plate that I buy from a company in the UK called Bromley. Uh, there's um, Ken Bromley Art Supplies, is quite a well known distributor of art materials. And I found these plates listed on their website a few years ago. Now they have um, the ability to be double-sided tape under here, quarter inch thread for a standard uh, tripod mount and four screws securing. Now often you can use these into the wood and they will stay put. And I have about six of these that I've used. I keep taking them off and putting them onto another box or another creation of mine. Um, and it also, I mean, you, it, you generally you wouldn't need to use this if you were using a timber platform because you could use something like a, um, what they call a T-nut, which is a quarter inch thread into a gripping screw barrel, which often people use for putting uh, adjustable feet onto a, a leg of something or something like that. I've used them in other spheres and nothing to do with art and they're very useful. I think the Americans call this thread type a quarter 20, quarter inch thread with 20 turns, I think per inch. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's right. But anyway, this is a product that costs around about 10 pounds or so and it's a lovely metal plate and it really is secure. And all I've done with this is cleaned off from when I used it before and put some fresh double-sided tape on it, stuck it down. I haven't even actually stuck it that square. I do apologize for that, that's a little bit shoddy. But it does the job, and the idea with this is now that I can, I won't bother with that now, but I can put that onto a tripod, and it will sit there, 
and it will do exactly the same sort of job as the other handheld. It can take a sketchbook quite happily. You can put this on here and I can clip that on each side as well. And I can use a simple 10 by seven board or anything else that I wish to. And that would then make it easy just to not have to hold anything, but it's quite a lightweight little structure to put onto a very cheap and very lightweight tripod, which is easy to carry too. So yes, I'm adding to my uh, arsenal of different products that I've got or different objects that I need to carry, but essentially I don't need to carry them all. The reason I designed this one is so that I can have a second tripod easily positioned to be able to film what I'm doing for you guys to enjoy and also over on my mobile channel where I do a lot of my plein air stuff. And the idea was then I can not sort of shake it all around and keep moving it because with this one, I've got to say that despite lots of efforts of mounting a camera here over the top like that or having it set to the side of me or even a chest mount GoPro, something like that, it doesn't matter what I do there is some sort of shake and movement and you just can't keep everything in shot. And you get so um, so involved with the painting you're doing or the sketching you're doing that you actually forget that the camera is focusing on here, but you may have moved over to here or out of here. And I've had so many ruined videos uh, in the past where that's exactly happened. So I felt that if I use this stuff um, to handhold probably it's not going to be easy to film it unless of course you guys watching this know otherwise if any of you guys uh, are creators and create your own art channels and you do a lot of sketching outside and you film it in very much this sort of way and i'd love to know from you how you set up your cameras to be able to concentrate on what you're doing and also staying in shot as well. So that's quite important. Anyway, enough of that, because that's not what you guys, most of you anyway, are here to listen to. So I did all of that and I made that. So this now has got absolute purpose in my kit bag. And all I need to do is take the extra tripod with me to put the cameras on and that will be absolutely fine. So there you go one mount and it is stable and it's just not going to go anywhere so that's good i'll list things like the tripod in the details under the show more tab of this video so you get an idea of what uh, i was on about so what else do i want to talk to you about and what possibly more could there be in my sketchbook or in my sketch bag well it's this basically i wanted to uh, come up with something that was even lighter and lightweight. And I came up with this idea. Now, this is Mark 1. By the time I perfected it, it could be Mark 21. I have no idea. But the first version of this was one solid piece of board. So I suppose this is Mark 2. <laughs> or Mark 1.5, just to drive a point home. But I created a small thing for a small sketchbook. Now this is a very tiny moleskin and it has served me well at different times. You've seen this uh, in other videos where I've done things like this in gouache and other material. But sometimes when you're out and about, you don't really want to take even the satchel. Sometimes you just, you're, in, you're busy doing something, you only get a few minutes and you just want to sketch something without going too mad and carrying everything around with you. So I wanted to do this. Now the first part of this worked very, very well. When I put this in here, and it's the very same principle as the larger one. So you're gonna put that in there like that, and you can then clip back the pages accordingly. These are very tiny clips. I do feel that I need to get a slightly bigger one to manage this side, but it will work for the moment and it will serve purpose to show you not all nearly <laughs> there we go now i need to get a bigger one let's use one of the other ones that i've got for the other setup so this is a slightly bigger one and it will do the same job 
there we are so that will just hold that page closed and tight on this piece of board now the thing about that it works fine as it is you can hold it in your hand and you can sketch to hearts to content you know until you're happy now i put that on there just to brace that fold because originally i had no cut in this and uh, what I felt was that I wanted this to be easy to put into a pocket. And a piece of seven inch wide by whatever it is deep board really is just too big, big to put in any pocket. So I had the idea, and I think it's a sound idea, that what I did was quite simply, I cut the piece of board in half. It's not pretty. And I did say this is Mark 1.5 and I may refine it yet. But I simply joined it there. I put it together here and put the tape on as the face joins. So there's no problem there. I then turned it to that position and then put the tape on so that when this opened up, it wouldn't tear. And it creates that little bit of a fold in the center there, which is fine. Now, on top of that, I then used the same uh, strips of magnet on here to house a little tin. And that works as well. So let's just put this one back together very quickly and show you exactly how it would operate. Just put that on. Just for ease, I will use the other bigger clip just to make sure I've got that in place and happy. So there you go, that's that and that's in place. Now, if you want to be a little more sure that this doesn't start folding up, you can have a clip or some sort of brace if you feel like it. I don't know yet. and I haven't tried this in anger, as it were, yet to see if it needs it. So what else did I do? Because this obviously is not going to function very well as a painting setup with no paint. So what I did is I rooted around. I've seen people use these many, many times in the past. And I've had one. I didn't enjoy using any of the contents of it, but... Um, that's what they are. And I'm not even sure, and somebody out there will probably know if you can still buy these, but uh, it's an Altoids tin. And any tin of this sort of size will really do the job for you. It doesn't have to be an Altoids tin. There are so many little tins that we get things in these days. Instead of throwing them in the bin when you consume the contents, then you can upcycle, uh, repurpose the tin for a much better use and in this one this is what I've done I open it the right way oh come on yes I am there we are the reason it was tight was because of this so what I did is I used um, some enamel paint two coats of simple enamel paint now this is a an enamel white from Humbrol I think a little tin which you really going to use more than a little touch or a few brush uh, dips into it. It's not going to uh, use much of it, but I think they're about one pound fifty to two pounds, something like that, for a little tin. And you've got white enamel, and that gives me a great surface to mix some watercolors on in the future. And what I did here, well, I had some empty pans, little half pans. I think these again were cheapest chips off of a, a well-known um, auction site that we are aware of and you can buy these in packets of 50 for a, just a few pounds and they're just you keep repurposing them but how do I fix it in here well I would have fixed it in with glue but then it makes them irremovable or not easily removable and if you get colors in here over time that you want to change out and put a new one in with a new color it's not so easy what I did is quite simply added little magnetic strip now the same magnetic strip as these is and let me just show you that so when you order this off of a, a well-known uh, auction site that I keep mentioning <laughs> um, it it's about 18 pounds for five meters and it's known as the thicker one there are two thicknesses this is a thicker one and it gives a little bit more grab to the metal or the magnet uh, strength of this tape and it is backed up by 3m and so you can cut a piece off with a pair of scissors chop 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 as it were and put them onto the basis of your pans 
and then peel the tape off and um, well peel the tape off then stick the pan to it of course and then you've got that little magnet that's holding that all together and the idea with that is that my normal palette has got something like 20 colors 21 colors maybe even more if i get a bit greedy but here this little altoid tin is actually holding 15 little reservoirs of color now that means to say that i've got to be a little choosy when i put color into here because it's not going to mimic the palette here so all these colors here are not going to go in here of course so i've got to be a little choosy and one or two of them are going to have to be lost uh, for this purpose but the idea is quite sound you put that on there it's safe it's not going to go anywhere you have a little gap here that you can hold a water pen and you can draw away with your pencil which i actually haven't got one out or you can hold use the brush or you can hold your well actually that will clip over you don't even need to worry about that that will sit on there quite happily and all of these little areas are very very good you can even clip a little piece of towel on here so that you can clean with this brush you don't have to keep putting this down you can squeeze a bit of uh, liquid and clean that brush off ready to pick up a new color and that is probably the simplest simplest way of taking out a little sketchbook that you can work with with watercolor using a watercolor pen this is one there is also the aquarelle uh, water brush from uh, pentel doesn't matter which one you use and indeed if you wanted to use brushes there's nothing stopping you taking a few selected watercolor brushes the travel ones that you often see i have mine here somewhere not sure where they've been put right now but you know those few uh, small brushes and you could have a very simple plastic what i'm searching for there it is little dipper and this little dipper will sit on there and you can have your water in there and you can use your watercolor brush you can put that up further still have a rag in there it's all very light and it's not going to go anywhere and the thing is that with that if you didn't have water and you didn't have travel brushes not that they're going to take up much more room you can have these two items you can close your lid off shut that down you can take that off take this off etc pull that out and it does as i say fit into a pocket very very neatly i've got a shirt on and i'm going to put them if i make sure there's nothing else and i'm going to put that lot in there into my shirt pocket a little bit of care it's all right i'm i've got the microphone now. i just realized shall i do that bit again then <laughs> I'll take the microphone off for a minute but you can see that I've got these two bits here they will fit into this pocket quite happily like so he says it does honest there we go get in there come on push dog so that's in that pocket that is the paints in that pocket with a water brush pen and an ink pen, pencil if you want to as well. You don't have to worry about that. Just put a mechanical pencil in there as well. A couple of clips. And off you go, done. So I've got two pockets. I can walk around anywhere I want to and I can literally sit down on a bench, get these things out, have it assembled in under 30 seconds and I can start painting, sketching or doing whatever I want to do. So I think that is the lightest way that I'm going to get out to do any plein air sketching when I'm not in my van, Clarabelle, or indeed anywhere else able to take the bag and, and utilize that. So it's a great way of sketching and doing urban sketching and just going out even if you took your dog out or something like that and sat down on a bench or I would do on the seawall and sketch something and the dog can mill around for a little bit while you're doing that. And as I say, if you want to put water in, in that form and have a couple of the uh, portable brushes, the, the uh, travel brushes that you can get that fold into themselves, that would be equally as good and you don't even then have to have a water pen if you don't want to now there was something else i wanted to talk to you about this this board now again it's 
cheap if you buy quite a bit of it off of another well-known uh, auction site that we all know about. But you can buy this in white or black and it's about three to four millimeters deep, uh, thick, and it's like a corrugated stiff plastic. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to start ordering extra supplies in to make any of this stuff up, and you have an old tin and some cheap pans that you can use and you can create something like this. These are easy to obtain. Any of that you can do, but all you would need to do is just save the back of a pad. Now this is a piece of the back of an Aquarello extra white board from one of the well-known companies. And the board on here is quite a good quality hard uh, gray board in a sense it's just a backing board but it's quite thick it's not too heavy and you could cut a piece of this down and you can cut into it and you can use that and that means to say that you do not need to go out and spend even more money you can make yourself a simple platform out of a piece of board like this and it doesn't have to be off of a well-known brand of watercolor it can be almost off of any drawing pad the thinner the board I would probably guess to say it would be worth joining two together face to face but this is quite sturdy quite thick board what I would however say to you is if you're using board like this nothing wrong with it but simply seal it use some acrylic varnish acrylic gel medium something like that and an acrylic medium of some sort to paint over this and then keep it flat because moisture will get in here from your watercolor painting, assumably at some point, and it can buckle and bow this and mess it up. So if you seal it to the elements, then you'll have a drawing surface that you can play around with. And you know, you could even make the bigger version. This version here that I showed you last week, you do not need to go out and buy tons of blackboard or indeed the white versions you can use one or two pieces of this to create very much the same thing and it will last you and i even thought of using things like good corrugated cardboard you know we get boxes from that well-known uh, auction site <laughs> if you're anything like me we get boxes almost every day um, and they all come in sort of fairly good compact cardboard quite clean cardboard and if some of them are quite thick you can get triple wall and double wall and if you get something like that it does make it a little bulkier but it is even cheaper to create something like these boards like these surfaces that you can take out and do some plein air sketching with and as very simply and as small as this little fella here and as I say you don't this tape it's not dear it's five meters for 18 pounds, but I think you can buy as little as two meters for uh, much less money, and that would serve you well. And this one doesn't even involve using double-sided tape. So yeah, have a go at this, and if you want to ask any questions, please do so uh, in the comments section, and I'd love to help you out and answer them for you. All of this stuff is here, more for decoration to fill out this Lovely, as you can see, I took no expense and provided a fantastic base drop as I always do for my video content and no expense spared with this uh, lovely piece of sheet uh, for you. <laughs> mm, sorry about that. Anyway, this was all for decoration. You've seen all of this stuff before, uh, but any of these components will work just as well on here in the same way as the other ones it doesn't make a lot of difference it's just the size here that's important and the ability to compact it down and slide it in a pocket or in a purse or in something quite small and easy to carry around with you without too much weight so i think i've uh, demonstrated that you know with a sketchbook like this uh, which doesn't cost very much money and a little bit of gray board or plastic board whatever it is i'm sure that with a, a craft knife and take care when use one of course uh, a craft knife you can create something very very simple very similar to this and just go out there and add a little tin of paints and it doesn't even have to be that small 
you know, a conventional uh, 12 pan watercolor box will also do the job. And some of those are as cheap as 10 or 15 pounds off of that well-known auction site again. <laughs> but take a look around, see what's out there and look in your cupboards and you may well have something just like this tin that will make a very good serviceable watercolor uh, pop for you and if you get a bit of uh, paint you enamel paint uh, lead paint as it used to be um, then you can uh, just put that surface in there and you can mix on that quite happily not a great big big mixing area but probably more than enough you need to do a little study because you're not going to be spending too much time filling out a page or two pages in a very tiny sketchbook enough of me rambling on and i do hope that this video has provided you with a little bit more information following on from the one two weeks ago and thank you for everybody who's watched that commented and supported the channel with likes etc that is fantastic and if you like this content and it has helped you out with a few ideas maybe that you can nip on out there and create something very, very simple to go and enjoy some sketching with in your spare time, then great. Give it a like, big thumbs up, all of that stuff. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. It's only the support of subscribers, likes, comments, all that interaction that tells the YouTube gods that this channel is worth supporting and pushing out there and recommending to other people who, like you, want to learn to paint and draw as well. So please do that, support the channel, help it grow, and I'd appreciate it. And don't forget, as always, there is my Patreon, there's lots on over there. Much of it is exclusive for a minimum of six months, if not longer, and I'd love to have your involvement with that. And of course, as always, that Sky course is there and it's seven hours for 67 pounds, well worth getting involved with, and I'd love to help you out with that one too. In the meantime, I'm gonna think of something other than kit bags to uh, do for you for next week's video next Friday. So until that time, enjoy. I do hope some of you will pick up the ideas from this and make your own little versions of something that you can take out with you in a purse or a bag or something simple, or even a jacket, and just enjoy outside sketching for the maybe the first time but do that and let me know how in fact yes let me know how you get on because i'd love to read some of your thoughts and ideas in the comments so let me know what you do and if you found this useful take care until next week bye bye okay everybody i couldn't quite leave it there i felt that it would be nice just to add some colors into this brand new tin before i completed the whole thing so there's the tin and that's the way it will appear on here so I can put it on there now like that. So that will be the way it will be. But I'm gonna use a lot of these colors I feel for mixing down in here. And the first one that I pretty much always have in is sepia. So let's just put some sepia in there. Where I'm gonna go next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix these up, probably speed this bit of film up and come back to you when I start pouring some in. Well, there you go already a problem. There are 18 colors there, and that is not all the ones I would normally put in, but I have got to make some decisions, and I've got to take three of these away. Now, I've already put this one in, but I've still got to find three to take out of what's left, and I can't have them all. So, mm, not easy. I think I'm gonna take out burnt umber, and it's a tough call because it doesn't leave me with a very dark brown and therefore sepia will have to be playing a much greater part overall than burnt umber. So that's one. Now, where do I go next? And I've got to, I've got to be strict over this. I've got, to take a, I've got to take some green out. I think I'm going to have to relinquish sap green and that will be two of them gone. Now, now I really am struggling to be fair because there's nothing there I want to lose, in all honesty. I've got light red. I think I may have to get rid of Sienna, um, which I'm not sure I want to do that, but I think that is what I've got to play with. There's two yellows, two reds primarily, some earth reds, and I've got some lovely blues. Now, you could consider there's just too many blues in here, 
But I love this new lavender, so I really want to keep that in. And I've got ultramarine and cobalt, which are my two stalwarts. And this one, like the lavender, is absolutely delicious. And I really want to keep that into the mix. Indigo is always great for a dark. And that may well work with Aussie red gold. The other red orange that I use is one called transparent pyrrole orange. Now, it will be a toss up between these two because this is a color that I've used often along with the translucent orange from Schmincke range. But this one is a recent addition. I haven't really got into using it yet. And I think I might well just keep that going in the moment, keep this to hand. If I want to change it back out, all I've got to do is add a little bit of a magnet to a new pan and pop it in place overall. So now I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are my 15 selected colors. Like them or not, that's what I think I'm gonna to have to work with. Many of you may well have other ideas. I love using this in my skies, so I don't wanna lose that one. And the red light red is a very useful red. So I'm gonna go with this, this now. And I'm going to put these in place. So I'm going to squeeze these out. So there's the light red. Okay, so that's my little color set up. And you know, even with the addition of that extra weight of the paint, it's still not a very heavy unit to use. And I think this will serve you very, very well out in the field. I'm gonna list the colors for this in the show more tab underneath. And I promise each and every one of you this time, it is the end of the video. Thanks for sticking with me. If you've got any questions, put them in the uh, uh, comments underneath. I'll answer them for you very happily. And if you've got any other thoughts or ideas that uh, sort of spring from this little video, then let me know those too. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care, stay safe wherever you are. Happy painting. Bye-bye.